Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about more popular books that I have not read yet. So I've already done this video once on my channel. I will have that video linked down in the description below if you want to check that one out. I love hyped books so I have a ton of books that I could do videos like these on and probably even more that I could do in the future too. But today I'm just going to be talking about 10 of them. I think there were five in my other video. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. We're just going to go in ABC order here and let's get going. So the first book is going to be An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. So this follows our main character. She paints portraits for the fair folk. However, one day she gets her first royal customer and she accidentally paints moral sorrow into his eyes, which could cost him his throne and his life. He then takes her to the courts to stand trial for what she did. However, along their journey there, they are constantly being attacked. So it's up to them to defeat whatever is wrong while also just relying on each other for survival. So my original plan was to read this book before Sorcery of Thorns came out. That did not happen. But I ended up loving Sorcery of Thorns. I gave it five stars and I do want to go back and read this one eventually. I do love books with like fake creatures in them and at the time I bought this I was like looking for more books like that because I had just started reading again. So this was one of the first ones that I ended up picking up and buying because of that but also I didn't end up reading it because I read The Folk of the Air instead. Which I have no regrets about that because I love that trilogy. It's one of my favorite things ever but it did end up hurting this book a little bit because I haven't read it yet and it's been like over a year. I do plan to hopefully get to this pretty soon. I do think it's going to be like a quick read. I'm pretty sure there's been like some talk about insta-love in this book, which does make me really nervous, especially since I have enough trouble like finding book couples to ship to begin with, let alone if there's insta-love involved. But everything else about this, I'm super excited for, so hopefully it doesn't let me down. So the next book is Legend by Marie Lu. So this book follows a republic that resides in what was formerly known as the United States. One of our main characters, June, was born into the wealthy district, and then our other main character, Day, was born in the slums. Their paths cross one day when Day becomes a prime suspect in the murder of June's brother. So the only Marie Lou book that I've ever read was when she wrote Batman Nightwalker for the DC Icon series, and although I didn't really enjoy that at all, I don't want to use that as an excuse to like not go and read her other books. Because I know she's a pretty popular author, so I feel like I do want to go give her other stuff a chance, so my plan is just like work my way through all of her books, except for maybe Warcross, because I don't think I'm going to like that if I read it. And that journey is going to start right here for me. I feel like since this book came out so long ago, I don't hear too much hype for it anymore, which is still kind of why I don't know too much about it. So maybe when I read this book, it'll surprise me. I don't know. I just feel like I missed out on this back in middle school and high school, so I want to like try to use my adult years to make up for that. I also do want to read The Young Elites, but I'm going to start with this one and like test the waters with it, but I think even if I end up not liking this, I do think I want to read that one as well. So the next book is Salt to the Sea by Rudis Petties. So this follows the sinking of a German cruise liner in 1945, and it follows like four fictional voices as they tell the story of a real-life tragedy. So my first book by this author was Fountains of Silence. I read it back when it came out because it was gathering a lot of hype around it and I knew this was like a really beloved author. So going into it I was really expecting to just be blown away by it but it turned out to just be fine for me. So I am a little disappointed that I haven't gotten the chance to like obsess over this author yet. So my search for that book that will blow me away by this author is going to continue on with this one. I've actually owned this for a really long time now. I was supposed to read it before Fountains of Silence but it just didn't happen. Back then, when I was reading historical fiction, I did like it, but I was never too excited to read it, but I am kind of getting into it now for whatever reason. I don't know where the change came with that. So I feel like waiting to read this actually is probably going to work out for me in this case, and this was a book of hers that actually really stood out to me when I first heard the plot for it. But if I end up not liking this one, my plan is to read all of this author's books until I find one that sticks because I really want to feel what other people feel when they read this author's writing and stories and it just hasn't happened yet. But because of the plot of this one, I really think this is going to be the one that does it for me. So my hopes are really high that this is going to be that book for me, but if not, there's still Between Shades of Grey. I know that one's really beloved too, so I'll have that as backup. So the next book is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. So this book follows our main character Simon, who is not openly gay. However, one of his emails gets into the wrong hands, and he ends up getting blackmailed into playing wingman for the class clown, or else his secret and also the privacy of the boy he was emailing will be exposed. Well, something about Becky Albertalli's books make me nervous. I know they don't always get the best reviews, although this one does seem to be an exception to that. I mostly want to read this because I do want to actually watch the movie one day, but it also just seems like a contemporary that I should be confident in because because even if I didn't know that this book had all this hype around it, it does seem like a plot that would interest me anyway. Which I do have a lot of trouble with contemporaries, so if one can get me to read it without any hype around it, it's probably a good sign. This does feel like another one of those books that if I had just picked it up and read it already, I probably would fly through it, but it just hasn't happened yet. So the next book is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. So this book takes place in Nazi Germany and it follows our main character as she discovers her love of reading and she steals books from like book burnings and wherever else she can find them. 
However, her world becomes opened up, but at the same time it gets closed down when her family takes in a Jewish man and hides him in their basement. So this was my favorite movie for a really long time when I was younger, and it still kind of is one of my favorites. Like, I have really fond memories of it, but and then again, that memory has slipped as the years have gone by. That's why I feel like I'm at a good point to, like, read this in book form and just, like, revisit the story and my love for it. So the main reason that I haven't read this book yet is because I did watch the movie first, so if I read this and ended up liking it more, I didn't want it to, like, destroy my memory of the movie. But I do hope to get to this very soon and maybe read some of this author's other stuff too, and also maybe watch the movie because it's been a while. So the next book is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. So this book follows our main character. She is trying to find her family in like an apocalypse situation where the earth is dying and very deadly. Ever since I first heard about this trilogy, I knew I had to read it, but back when I was going to bookstores, I would always look for it and I could never seem to find it, so eventually I just gave up and ordered it online. In hindsight, that's maybe what I should have done in the first place. It would have made everything just a whole lot easier, and also maybe this book would have been read by now if I had done that. There have been so many points where I just look over to my shelves and I see this book sitting there unread and it just makes me want to clear everything off of my TBR and just focus on this, but I've been good and I haven't done that yet. I did kind of mention this in the synopsis, but it's like end of the world and apocalypse which I always find really interesting and most of the time I end up really enjoying it when I read that kind of stuff. But yeah, this particular book just sounds right up my alley. Like, imagine if I didn't end up liking this. Like, I don't even want to think about it because I've just been hyping up this book in my head for like way too long for that to happen to me at this point. So the next book is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It's kind of heavy. I feel like I need to hold it with two hands. This book follows a 13-year-old boy after he survives the accident that killed his mother. His father abandons him and he goes to live with like a wealthy family. It is there that he gets drawn to this painting that reminds him of his mother and then he gets introduced to like the underground world of art. And when he gets older, this will involve him in like a dangerous circle. So what made me want to pick up this book originally was a movie trailer for some reason that just made me really want to read this. So now I'm sitting here with a 700 page literary fiction book that kind of looks like it could be 500 pages, but it isn't. But I definitely do want to read a Donna Tartt book eventually, and this one does interest me more than The Secret History does, so as soon as it stops intimidating me, then hopefully I'll have a good time with it. So the next book, and I feel like this might be the most popular out of all the books on this list, but it is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. And I feel like a lot of you know what this is, but just in case you don't, I'm going to give a synopsis anyway. So this book follows a nation that is ruled by the capital, and the capital forces people from ages 13 to 18 to participate in the Hunger Games that will be live-streamed on TV. When Katniss first takes her sister's place in the game, she expects it to be like a death sentence situation. However, when she becomes an actual contender to win, she must start making decisions that could go against her humanity and her heart. So this book has just been like insanely popular for a really long time, but I remember it being like even more popular if that's even possible back in middle school. Back when the movies were coming out, and I didn't watch the movies when they first came out, but I did watch them a couple years ago and I did end up enjoying them. Ever since I watched them, I did want to go back and read the actual books because I missed out on that when I was a kid. But I haven't yet because I guess I just never fully committed to that idea, like I just got these in the mail yesterday. But what did finally make me obtain these books is that the prequel just came out, and I know it's getting, like, mixed reviews. But there was still, like, a lot of talk about it, and like I said, I love hyped books, so whenever something gets talked about, it makes me want to go read it. Also, just the concept of the Hunger Games in general has always really interested me, and I know there's a love triangle in here, and I don't typically like that, but since I already watched the movie, she does end up with the person that I wanted her to, so I should be good to go here. I do tend to get mixed emotions about dystopians, it's kind of like how I feel about urban fantasy where I have books that I love from that genre but I just can never get myself excited to read it. I don't see that being an issue here because I feel like literally everyone and their mother has read and loved this book series. And I do want to be a part of that eventually, I just gotta find the time out of like the 10 million other unread books that I have on my shelf to finally read this. So this next one is actually going to be a poetry collection and that is The Mermaid's Voice Returns in this one by Amanda Lovelace. So this looks like it focuses on empowerment, escapism, and healing, and when I read some reviews I also found out that it focuses really heavily on like sexual assault and the Me Too movement. Which all sounds really good for me, like I'm down, but let me just give you a rundown of my journey with Amanda Lovelace books. I read The Princess Saves Herself in this one. I really liked it. Four stars. I read The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. That almost got a one star. I did not like that at all. And then I read her How to Make Monsters Out of Girls, and I did not like that either. I think I maybe gave that like a two and a half, maybe a three, maybe a two. I don't really remember. And if I end up not liking this one, it will probably be my last Amanda Lovelace book. So that's why I haven't read this book yet, but I still do want to give it a chance because of how much I did end up liking the first book. And then when I do finish this book, I will probably finally have confirmation about what my thoughts are on this author, unless I end up liking this, which is the best case scenario, don't get me wrong, but honestly at this point it would probably just make me more confused about this situation. 
probably the next time I like bulk read a bunch of poetry I'll just throw this in there and I'll see what I think then. So the last book on this list is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. This book follows our main character as he grows to become the greatest and most famous wizard that the world has ever seen. So I'm pretty sure this starts with him at like a really young age and then follows his journey as he grows up. So this is another one of those books that even if I didn't know it was so well loved and hyped I would still want to read it just based on the plot. And again it's just another one that as soon as I first heard the plot I knew I had to get my hands on it and read it eventually. And yes you are looking at a mass market paperback right now which is honestly where some of the problem lies. So it's a pretty long book I think a little over 700 pages so that combined just with like the format of this is why I haven't read it yet. I do think that mass market paperbacks are kind of cute, and I do own the Game of Thrones trilogy, which I've read the first two books of in this format, which was why I bought it like this, because I was like, if I can handle the Game of Thrones books in this format, I can handle this. And I still do go by that logic, but those Game of Thrones books took me absolutely forever to read, and it really held up all of my reading plans. But I still am interested in this, and probably when I eventually feel comfortable enough in my reading life and TBR is when I will finally go ahead and do this. So those are all the books I have for this video. I think I mentioned this in my intro, but I do kind of have enough to like do more videos on this sometime in the future, so that should be fun. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that will be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!